Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sunday of the 33rd Annual Music City Classic, brought to you by the Greater Nashville Darting Association, live here in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Sonesta Nashville Ho Airport uh, Hotel. I wrote the wrong thing down. Uh, A.K.A. the Igloo, because uh, it has not reached a temperature above a crisp 55 in this building. Uh, the way I like to describe this to you people this morning is, you know that like first fall <laughs> day where you walk outside your your house and th you can see your breath for the first time and you're like, oh, this is crisp and pleasant. It's like that, only that temperature never changes, <laughs> never goes back up and to it, a normal fall day. And it jumped down about 30 degrees, exactly. let's be honest. <laughs> exactly. I'm surprised you are not seeing the players' breaths as they are on stage. Well, this should be a doozy here. Gavin Nickel taking on Cess Stefano in our CDC Evolution Finals. Yeah, for event number nine, uh, I can actually run through the Evolution Tour this weekend. Event seven went to Joey the Juggernaut, Lenal. Uh That was his fifth victory in seven events uh, for the CDC Evolution Tour this year. He averaged 77 in that final. Uh, defeating Gavin Nickel, who's going to really want that payback. <laughs> I mean, pegs the dead center of that bullseye there. Um, event 8 winner, you just you looked at him right there. Seth Lacombe Stefano defeated Joey Lenal in the final, averaging 73 to, to best Joey 75. Event number 9, Gavin Nickel in his second final. Same thing with Seth Stefano, but Seth Stefano's 1-0 and, and Gavin's 0-1. What do you think, bud? Do you think the uh, the numbers favor three different Evolution Tour winners this this weekend? I would say they do. I mean, Gavin Nickel putting up quite the performance in uh, one of these matches. I yeah, guess. he actually took out Joey Lenaw, uh, averaging through four legs a 108. Through six legs, he was averaging 103, and it was a 3-3 score line. That's Joey Lenaw is Joey Lenaw. Um, of course, went on a little mini run there, but... Gavin ended up with a 98 average for the match. I mean, impressive. Both these guys have their CDC t main tour cards as well, but 19 years old for Seth Stefano, uh, 20 for Gavin Nickel. The future of darts is bright. And Gavin's been on a quite the tear this weekend. So that 98 average, while is fantastic, was not super shocking to be quite honest with you. I think Seth will be the first one to tell you that he's kind of just getting back into the groove of things. I think he maybe struggled with a little bit of of lapse in interest. I would, I, I think so. Oh, absolutely. Um, th but that's going to happen when you're these guys' age, let's be honest. A lot of things uh, going on when you're, you know, in that teen range or upper teen range turning into maybe the 20s as actually Gavin is 20 he told me yesterday yeah um and Seth pointed out that he's still 19 <laughs> <to> me, <laughs> so, uh, 
I appreciate them going back and checking our mistakes uh, and, you know, making sure that we are aware of their actual ages. But, no, I listen, if someone paid me a million dollars to go back to my 19-year-old self to give him as any advice that he wants, I'm going to say no because I don't want to talk to that 19-year-old. <laughs> I was a terrible, terrible 19-year-old. Um, so I can only imagine uh, these, these kids, especially with the talent level that they have, they're the top – they're – top-level darters at the ages that they are. Seth came on the scene in one year. First year in the CDC with his tour card wins an event. I yeah, mean, it's going to get boring. He stormed onto the scene. When you just haven't faced the, the adversity there. 34 left. I was way off. 14 left. <laughs> I was about I saying, what are you 20. talking I about, about, buddy? The 20. <laughs> and then I should have just not talked like I was going to. Seth not happy with that. Dart. No, it's completely blocked. He would have liked that closer to the trip, but then you go to closer to the trip, you might bust it. Double 10 to break the throw of Gavin Nickel in the first leg. Raced a six here in the final. The Evolution Tour, I have loved the format. They go four, five, six uh, as they go through the quarter, semis, and finals. It's Perfect really for, those for those kids. It's really a builder. How about this? We have a uh, fantastic player in the chat as Lisa Ashton tuning in from Australia. Wow. As she's playing in the, uh, I think it's the Australian Masters down there, I believe, something like that. That's amazing. No, uh, thank you so much for tuning in with us. That's, that's awesome. Um, these kids have been throwing phenomenal. The average that they're showing right now is not the average that they show. Uh, Seth today has averaged 83 for a match. Gavin, like I said, 98.39 through seven legs of darts in his uh, semifinal matchup against Joey the Juggernaut Lenaw. I do have to mention uh, to Lisa, thanks for picking on Kuish for me. I, <laughs> I really appreciate you doing that because I'm going to text her later and be like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> got Gerald uh. Graham from Cheyenne, Wyoming tuning in with us. So going from Australia to Wyoming, all over the world, buddy. It's great to see. They are definitely throwing a little bit more of a scrappy match early on in the igloo. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't anticipate this being in the 50s right now. I anticipated it being in the mid-70s, as these guys have been really putting in some good numbers. But that one leg of double trouble can, can really eat at the uh, averages. Yeah, Gavin's averaging 81, but that's with a 68 in his last match. And Seth's averaging a 66, but that's well, with a 50-something. As boom goes the dynamite. Seth Stefano with our first 180 of the match to the first of a few, I'm sure. Seth actually has five now in this uh, event. That's only four matches. <laughs> he has five 180s. Didn't surprise me at all as he's going for double top. Oh, and wires it. Given Gavin a look at this 167. Definitely the skill level to pull this off. Allegedly. He's not throwing with as much uh, vigor mm -hmm. as he was he earlier. Was, yeah, he was throwing yesterday with a little oomph behind him. Oh, yeah. I mean, taking the dart back a little bit further and just firing it in the dartboard. It actually shocked me to see that not on stream but in person watching him play earlier. It stood out. He just took a second there to kind of feel like he's getting back in the groove of things. I'm surprised yeah, he didn't switch there. The one thing that Gavin needs to uh, not do to uh, have his father's legacy live on maybe is the mustache. <laughs> he's not gotta going in do perfectly the, yet. got to do the stash. He, Come on. He needs, uh, <laughs> he needs like Beard Nation or something like that to get that thing a little bit... Hey, a little give, bit better. Give him a couple years. Give him a couple <laughs> years. He's growing it in now. I hope he takes over the nickname. That would be incredible. Oh, man. Big shout out to uh, his father. On, yeah. yeah, and the Nickel family. Unfortunately, uh, his father passed away. Well, I think it was around a year ago now, I would, I, I believe. It always seems like that. I bet it's been at least that yeah. now at this point. Yeah. Sestafano oh. throws in a 174 with a nod. So two big round visits for him so far in this match and Ooh. look at gavin nickel anything you can do i can do better as he gives him a come on one five five needed for stefano 
and he's not going to get the look, so Gavin will come back up. 60 needed, 20 for tops. November, so there you go. It hasn't even been that long. Ooh, 58 yeah, left. To... Tops. Gets it after the first dart. That's impressive. Hey, there's a, there's a 15 dart leg. That's more like it for these kids. I'm saying kids. They're 19 and 20. <laughs> That's how old I sound right now. Yeah, that one leg was a was a deceiving leg as we're right back up where we thought we'd be. Yeah, the 50s went bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Big shout-out to the sponsors of these kids supporting them. Target Elite for Sestefano. Yeah, both DJD sponsored players, Absolutely. Dirty Jersey Darts. You know what? We've seen Dirty Jersey Darts has the top talent uh, for youth in this country right now, it seems like. Yeah. Majority of it. David Garfinkel's a big supporter of the uh, youth. He's also, I believe, kind of hangs out with that CDC crew a lot, helps you guys out, I believe. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, Dave's been wonderful. One of those guys that I first finally got to meet this year uh, as a CDC commentator for the first time, and um, it's been one of those relationships that I've very much enjoyed talking to him every time I do. Jacob Worthy saying, looking forward to CSE tomorrow. He's been with us since night one, I believe. Our first night ever doing commentary together. I think Jake was there. I forgot. We do have CSC tomorrow. <laughs> as Will's going to have to make a pit stop on his way home, actually, to do some commentary for that one. I think we scramble around. and I mean, I'm 11 hours from home here, so uh, I'm going to have to make that old pit stop. I need to drive straight through. Yeah, I, I really tr could, I, I could try. No, I would never do that. I, I was you. thinking about it, honestly. I'm kind of kind of wondering what time I get up, get around, and we'll see what happens. But Seth trying to leave himself a great finish here from 216. 95 score is going to do pretty well. What type of pressure will that be under? Gavin's starting to throw with a little bit more vigor again. Mm -hmm. you noticing that? You're starting to see that little pizzazz after that 180. 101, bullseye. Oh, we saw his whole body move there before he shot that dart. You saw it. He, he even noticed. He's like, yeah. what are you doing? Gavin. Oh, oh, that was in, too. He had 60 on the floor. That is that so left to break. fortunate right there because you can literally see it was in. Oh, Absolutely. And he can't go there again, but sets it up perfectly for tops. <laughs> what a beautiful third dart after the first or after the second dart. Double eight. The calm, trying to stay calm, does so. Three one lead for Seth. Holds the throw. Gavin might not have hit the twenty eight, but he deserved a look at it. He certainly deserves a look at that one. I mean, that was in there. 120 scored, but unfortunately, uh, the old one in, pop the other one in, out. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, he's definitely throwing a little bit more oomph. Seth just staying nice and relaxed. Again, these guys have been practice partners both in Ohio. Yeah. Um, they've made both each other, or they've made each other better. If you talk to either one of them, they will tell you that. I mentioned it to you a couple times. Yep. It was uh, Seth that told me that. I think at Booyah Cup, he's like, Gavin's really picking up the pace, man. I said, really? He's like, he's got a drive right now, and it, he's going to be one to reckon with. I guarantee it. And you see him fighting it out here. Yeah, it's a really, really cool family legacy story. Uh, for him to get the CDC tour card and I can have the success that he's having. I couldn't resist the opportunity at the LVO when they had a bunch of Bullseye News uh, magazines laying around. I swooped up a couple, one from Larry Butler's win uh, at 94, and then Bill Nichols' edition. So I had to grab that bad boy. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in with us here at USA Darts Productions. Sean Green, Will Stewart. Yeah, looking forward to our uh, our day here, our final day of coverage at the Music City Classic. It's been great so far. We got a couple interviews we're working on. We had Liz Tynan 
in the mix. So we're going to try to get Danny Lobby. We just sat down with Alex Spellman. Yep. A big winner from ESPN on Friday. Look forward to having Wait, that out. ESPN athlete? Yeah. Alex yeah. Spellman? Mr. ESPN is what I call him. <laughs> it's actually funny because that's what Ryan George calls me, <laughs> even though I've never been on it. I get to work with an ESPN commentator next week. Hey. Shout out to Gordon and DJ. I actually saw a negative review of the commentary, and I was shocked. Really? Because I was like, why, if, if that's negative, like, if you're, <laughs> if you're upset at how that commentary went, man, do I have a stream for you to avoid. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> I thought they did great. Ah, uh, yeah, I think they did. I mean, to have that third person in there, which is definitely a little bit different. They've never done that one. But to have that third person in there and yeah, do it well. Good. Holds his throw, 3-2. Yeah, you're right. Both of them averaging 69, right at that 70 mark. For both those guys, that's lower than, than they'd like to be. Like I said, Seth was averaging 90s. A lot is, oh, big 140. Jacob pointing out, uh, absolute fun to watch Randy Magneto take second. I agree. Uh, you want to talk about four guys that represent darts the right way. I don't think you could ask for uh, for much better in that in that final four and the finals for sure. Alex and Randy are two of the nicest people you can talk to. Speaking of finalists, I couldn't resist when I walked up next to Joe Cheney today and said, "Man, that was quite the sock shoe combo <laughs> you gave us yesterday." He goes, "Man, I look like an idiot, didn't I?" <laughs> As long as he knows, that's all that matters to me. <laughs> I'm it happy is, you went up to him. And it is him. it is twangy accent. Yeah, man, it was funny. I took a chance on that one because uh, I actually I don't think I've introduced myself to Joe yet. Oh, character. Um, I need to character. But uh, took a chance on making fun of the the sock combo. One, two, three there for Gavin. Puts himself in great position to break the throw. Ninety five from Seth puts him on a finish, but an outside shot, especially with Gavin going first on fifty three. Tops to tie it up and get back on throw. Can't get it done yet. We'll see if he will return. This seems like the type of moment where Seth expects to hit this. See? See his yeah. face there? He, he knew it was a good dart, and it just didn't go in, and that's an unfortunate last two. Gavin going right at this, you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Right perfectly pinpoints one above the wire, one right in. Gavin Nickel ties it up 3-3. First to six legs here in the final of the Evolution Tour of the CDC event number nine. I'm telling you what. These Evolution Tour finals have been some of my favorite matches from the entire weekend, hands down. I, I I will second that for you, sir. It's been really entertaining as really these guys – they battle it out all weekend long in round robin to knockout forms. Right. And then they, I mean, they just, it's so awesome to see the talent level in these guys just rise together. And again, a lot of those Evolution Tour players are CDC card holders for the main tour mm -hmm. and play them. Gavin actually won his spot. Uh, what was it? I th it was, wa was it wadded last year? It was something. It was an event last yep. year on yep. the floor. I think it was Virginia Beach. It was Virginia Beach. Yep, I believe. There you go. The CDC doing it a little bit different this year and had four qualifying spots in different um, tournament locations, which was great because it added a few more tour cards than we had and gets a, some of the uh, some fresher people. Yeah, uh, some more fresher people. Some like Gavin Nickel. Oh, I keep doing that a little bit too quick on that, that <laughs> button push. <laughs> ah, go start. He only leaves a 160 from 200, so Gavin has got to feel good about having six from 132. Yeah, going to go bulls here to start us off, and I don't think that's in. It is no, not. It is not. That actually landed a little bit weird for him. Oh, saves it, though. Whew, last, 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 last start. 160 here. Not going to go.
So here we go, Gavin Nickel to take the lead in this match for the first time. Tops, what a brilliant two dark combination to go trip eight tops. Well, I love those two dark combos. Anytime you hit those, it just feels good. It feels like that's what you should be working on in practice sessions. Those 60 to 90 range, those little two dark combos like that, those are really big, crucial parts of the game. And Look at Gavin this. Gavin is finding his range now. Boom goes the dynamite. 180 to start off the leg against the throw. The momentum swinging into the favor of Gavin Nickel. Yeah, once again, Gavin Nickel, 20 years old. Sestefano, 19 years young, let's be honest. Right. This is the CDC Evolution Tour. Uh, to qualify for this, it's ages 23 to 10. Anyone under 23 uh, and above the age of 10, or 10 or above, can, can enter into the, any of these tournaments. And I strongly suggest, if you're a youth in our country and have the opportunity to enter into these, you talked to Scott Kirshner earlier, and we're, I'm sure we'll see that inter interview at some point, but Connor, uh, his grandson, 13 years old, playing his first CDC Evolution in Youth Tours, and he got a lot of experience. It Won was, some legs. It was honestly so nice to just chat with Scott, and I walked outside, I was like, I got to pull Scott up. I was just so entranced. I was like, I got to pull him up. He's a guy that's had experience on a big stage. Oh, absolutely. And he even mentioned, he said he lost interest in the game for a couple of years after, unfortunately, his oh. grand granddaughter. Gavin misses the big number. That's tough one of those uh, simple mistakes that is easy to make. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I mean. He's got that life resurgent back with Connor. It's nice to see him around here, especially from the Wisconsin area. Tops for Seth to tie it back up and hold his throw. Just inside. So Gavin, a chance to win Four on the trot. Double 16, one dart in hand. Is it in? No, it is not. It's on the inside oh. corner. It just looked like the wire got bent. David, actually, you can see Scott in the background there. He's wearing a yellow and black jersey. Seth gets it done in two. A sigh of relief. 4-4. Four, four. This is a slugfest, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there is Scotty and uh, Ryan Olsen in the background there. Mm -hmm. Nice to see them tag teaming for doubles this uh, tournament. Looking for another 180 start. Gavin Nickel is finding his range. And all he has to do is do things like that with his throw, and he wins this. And Ryan George asking about Sestefano's barrel choice. Yep, those are Danny Baggish barrels that he's throwing. I'm actually enticed by the barrels that Gavin are throwing right now. I'm wondering uh, whose those are. There's a good look as we go so downstairs. Yep. He'll probably switch again. Yep. Yep. Smart moves. He's blocked on those first two darts. Let's take a look, folks. Look at Gavin's. Yeah, unique barrel. I really haven't seen those before. I'm wondering, uh, they couldn't look like a 180, 180 knockoff myself. But big a ton. Steady ton there for Sestefano. Gavin just doing everything he needs to do with his own throw. My goodness. A 1-2-1. One, one. What type of pressure will this 99 be under? Not, not a bad amount. Yeah. 105 <laughs> left with that 140. 99 is not simple. 42 remaining. 10-6 wire. It's exactly what you do with 42 left. Leaves himself double 18 just inside on it. So Seth's going to get an outside chance here to break the throw and take control of the match with a 105 finish potential. 85. He went the 15 route. Just going to try and tee it up in case he returns. 18 can be a tricky, tricky double nine. That's a great first start, though, from Gavin. Oh my gosh, it almost had to go after the first two. Seth, 60 remaining. 
he was not expecting that opportunity to see him. Yeah, he's so surprised at getting this opportunity, honestly. 20 for tops. There's the 20. Has a whole right side of that wire and somehow goes to the left side into the trip five or double five. So double 15. Wow, that could not be closer. Could not be closer. It's a beautiful thing about this game. It's a game of one millimeter. Double four. Takes it down. Stays in control. 20 dart hole to throw. That's a gift. But he will take that gift every time. 5-4 lead. Gavin Nickel one leg away from giving us three different Evolution Tour winners this weekend. Seth looking for a second. Couldn't go to the first six in Canada, so trying to make up for it point-wise here. Yeah, it was an unfortunate thing. He couldn't make it to across the pond for those events, but due to regulations and stipulations the way they are, it's unfortunate. But Seth with a nice 140. So probably, so probably my favorite thing about Gavin's throw is just how steady his base is. He'll throw that third dart and take a split second before he starts moving towards that dart board. Seth actually does the opposite. He's moving towards that dart board as he's releasing that third dart, which sometimes causes some issues. I really love Gavin's rhythm. I've, that's one thing that I notice. It's almost like that Danny Lobby style. Which is a Big 177, wow. Seth Stefano to set it up perfectly. On 24 after 12 to hold his throw. I agree. The rhythm of Gavin's is, is beautiful. I also love the rhythm of Seth when he's on because it stays the exact same, nice and smooth. That one he threw quick just because I was paying attention to the rhythm that whole time. <laughs> Bust it. So he'll be back for 24. I'm pretty sure this board has not been rotated at all, and it's been the same board this whole time. And yep. for it only to be showing that type of wear is impressive for an entire weekend of darts. And Seth unable to do it. Open up the chance here. Gavin can win it right here with a 118 checkout. 98 left. Needed a trip to give a shot at it. 60 if he returns. Double three so awkward. Hey. Unless you're Sestefano and you do it in the first dart. <laughs> Forces a decider here in this one. Live here, 33rd Annual Music City Classic for the CDC Evolution Tour event number nine final. Last leg decider. The last time Gavin was in this position, he lost 6-5 to Joey Lenaw. Yeah, he's hungry right now to get this title, and he starts off with a 140. He has done everything he has needed to do with the throw. 121 would be nice, and he Gets grabs it. it. A steady 60. Could not have grouped that very, very much better. Seth with the, <laughs> the 60. These guys are following each other. This would be Gavin's first Evolution Tour title this year. Seth looking for a second in as many events. Huge. What a big 140 to leave himself on 180 after nine. 85 scored from Gavin. That'll add the pressure. Seth's got to be feeling pretty good about his position here. But Gavin will get an outside shot of that 156. I think he's got to hit a trip when he wants to go trip 20. I think that's the uh, angle, but that's just so hard to work around. Yep. He'll leave the Shanghai if he gets a chance to return. Gavin not going to take it out, so he will be back on that 120. Hits the ton, I believe. Yeah, he does. Leads 56. What a great last start setup. Seth needs a trip 20. Gets it. Tops. For the match, takes a step back, takes a deep breath. I like this. 
for two titles out of three this weekend. I don't like this, though. No, I don't like the double. Uh, no. But he also, his darts pitch up a little bit, so he has to make sure he has an angle that he likes for the shot. I'm, I'm happy that he's taking his time to throw it the right way. Just over the top, and it just touches the flight. And look at this, 56 left. Going to get two darts at this. 16 for tops. No other way to go, I think. Tops for the match. And he does oh. take it down. Gavin Nickel deserved it today. Average 98 to beat Joey Lenal and then takes down Seth Stefano. So his road to this point, although it was two matches, it was against the two former champions this weekend. My word, that was just a thriller right there. Let me tell you, as we're going to actually have the highlight here, I think, as we go, uh, well, hopefully I like back the in time. Maybe, maybe the handshake. <laughs> yeah, maybe we get the handshake from him. Beautiful, beautiful replay of the handshake. <laughs> Do it a hey! third time. I love we it. We got the handshake, I guess. <laughs> I double tapped. That's all right. But, hey, what a, what a final that was, honestly, as a 6-5 win for Nichols, 76 average overall. Oh, my gosh, he gets a penny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't know Aaron's in there. Oh, yeah. Aaron's in there. As unfortunately, the trophies are with Aaron uh, right now up in, uh, up in New York. As she, unfortunately, wasn't able to make her way uh, to the event. Heck of a battle between those two guys. Hats off to all of our Evolution and Youth Tour players this weekend. There is one more youth event for the CDC left uh, starting at 1 p.m. today. There it is. 16 tops. For tops. Gives a little come on at the end. So you just had to find it. Just had to find it. <laughs> Good stuff. As there we're he see, is. Uh, and you see that stash that I was talking about. I know you probably couldn't see it while he was playing. So <laughs> it's, it's blonde. It blends in. <laughs> and there's Mr. Cetera taking the picture of uh, Gavin as he, uh, well, that's uh, three different winners, correct? It is. Yeah, Joey Lenal won event seven. That's actually his fifth title in seven events uh, by that point, but unable to uh, get it done the other two events. Estefano gets his first, and then Gavin Nickel gets his first. Well, folks, we're going to have some more action, including our uh, women's singles that should be coming up to the stage here next. Hang on to your seats. As I've been saying, we're going to get underway in just a moment's time with some more action from the Music City Classic. And you can tell there's some twang coming out in his voice. That's how long we've been in Nashville. Is there a little <laughs> twang coming out here? <laughs> it's, it's funny. Oh, no. Guys, cricket coming up. Cannot wait. It's how we, it's our first love as commentators together. Yeah, we're going to get a little taste for uh, the CSC Challenger Series before we get going in that one. So hang on to your seats, folks. We'll be right back. Here with Liz Tide and Liz having a great finish, uh, well, both in the North American Women Darters Association qualifier as well as the singles 01 today. Yeah. How does it feel to be a two-time champ yeah. in that qualifier? It's great. Um, playing against some of the top women in, Chicago, in in the in the United States, and um, we had a short shorter field this year, but um, hopefully it grows a little bit bigger and we get more people out to play. But it was good. Yeah, there you go. Two times now. So uh, coming through that round robin bracket into the knockouts. Round robin can always be one of those things that you're going to have some bad rounds, you're going to have some good yeah. rounds, but getting through that knockout is always nice, isn't it? It is. The, especially the first round of the knockout, it's it's crucial to win that one. And you, 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 wanna, you don't want to stumble coming out of the gate in that one, and I didn't, and it was good. There you go. Well, that must feel good, as well as winning the 01 singles today, yeah, taking yeah. out Tracy Firetag. 4-0 in that final, but yeah. you were throwing really clutch, uh, was. hitting some good trip 20s. What do you say? I felt like I wasn't missing it. It just, like, my first dart was in there every time, you know, so I was lucky to just keep, you know, finding that spot every time I went up there, and 
you know, she was she stayed with me most of the game, so she played well. I played well in my other games leading up into that, so I felt really comfortable in the final there. Well, that's good to hear. Well, thank you for taking a quick moment with us. Keep it short and sweet. Yep. Appreciate you spending just a second with us and uh, talking about your two nice wins nice. here this weekend. Right. Thank you. <laughs> sweet. There we go. So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching. So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're a to Z darts.com and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country, but don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full on expert, we developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. So
All right, guys. Sorry about that. Welcome back to the 33rd annual Music City Classic, brought to you by the Greater Dar Nashville Darting Association here at the Senesta Nashville Airport Hotel, a.k.a. the Igloo. We are here for semifinals of the women's singles. This is Paula Murphy. I w I'm just going to say it, probably the favorite uh, going into this event, so it is not a shock to see her here. Same thing with Tracy Firetag, who I did not know before this event started. Um, never seen her play before, but she has been consistently in the semifinals, it seems like, every women's event. And there are some great competitors here this weekend. And I forgot that you don't even have your stuff turned on, so you can't even respond to that. So I, no. I went from, I was trying to do a two-person <laughs> <laughs> talk instead of a one. No, you're good. I, I actually, we were chatting uh, and doing a couple interviews in the meantime, and um, I forgot. I was like, oh, no, we're going to cricket. i got to set that up still. And I was <laughs> like, uh-oh, we haven't used the scoreboard right. So sorry for that one, folks, is i got to make sure we have uh, our score line there as it's just a little bit different. But, hey, we're back. We're better than ever. With cricket. With cricket. You know what that means. Oh, no. I don't. Like I get to detonate some stuff today. I don't like the boom goes the dynamite. I know you don't like it. You love it. <laughs> well, here we go with the women's semifinal. It's Paula Murphy, Tracy Firetag. Getting it going here. Paula actually, actually just coming through uh, Cali West. That's, uh, that's what I meant by match. Uh, Callie and uh, Robin, of course, were the champions last night in the women's doubles 501. That would have been a great trip 19. And that's how bad I am at darts, is that's literally what I will say to myself after I throw that dart every time. Great, great trip 19. Get a little bit better angle here. So we zoom in just a hair. Paula prefers that right hand side of the Aki. Uh, she is called the smooth operator for a reason. You can see how just that release. It, her oh, entire there. throw is almost at the same speed, um, no matter what. So that what that means for Paula is that she's holding that dart in her hand as she's coming through longer than most to get the the speed on the dart needed because it's not her arm moving that much faster. It's it's just great form that gets the dart in the right spot. Paula, I mean, a legend of women's starts. Well, she got Countless the times overseas. She she also was in the ESPN. Uh, yes, she top was top thirty-two, and actually, she went a few rounds deep. Yep. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was someone that when you saw that list, you didn't immediately think she can't win. Which is great. That's how they all should be. Yeah. Well, another lady that was. Uh, well, should have been in the mix. Chrissy Kremel. Yep. Fortunately, she had some prior obligations, so uh, wasn't able to attend. But yeah, just a mention on that one as well. She is the only female in the CSE Challenger Series for Division Two or Division One mm -hmm. uh, this season. That starts tomorrow night, 9:30 p.m. Yeah, you can check it out right here on USA Darts or the PPD page. Partners so promoting darts. That, yeah. yeah, partner par partners promoting darts. I guess you should say that all out, but. Yeah, we're excited to add that to our platform here on USA Darts as we uh, add that race to nine cricket format for some big money. Oh, my gosh. And every Monday and Wednesday, 9.30, you can set your clock. Tuesdays, you throw the siege on there. You got three days in a row of class darts. And above average commentary for a dart live stream. <laughs> above <laughs> average. <laughs> oh, we'll just say decent. At best. At best. Paula Murphy for this tournament is averaging a 2.96 in her four matches and nine legs played. She's also only dropped one leg of darts uh, in the tournament so far on her way to the semifinals. Tracy's averaging a 2.41, so average-wise, definitely favoring Paula Murphy as Paula takes out leg number one with three bowls. Goes hat trick. Which, guys, if you're a soft tip player, it's a lot harder to hit a, a hat trick and steel tip. Yeah. Oh, certainly. The I can bull is just that a uh, little bit smaller. I can actually count on one finger the amount of times I've hit double bull, double bull, double bull in my lifetime. On one finger? On one finger. 
but at least I can do it on one. <laughs> Maybe you will fill the hand on that one. <laughs> Helpless little uh, plug for myself. Oh, what? Definitely not. Paula Murphy 1-0 in this one over Tracy. Device is unreachable. Get out of here. <laughs> Guys, I can't tell you how much we appreciate all of you tuning in with us. Oh, it's been incredible this week. Honestly, 400-plus uh, um, numerous times Yep, in this one. Been great. We can make up numbers. Uh, 600 <laughs> Six was seven on there million. last night. Seven yeah, 7 million, million watched the Danny Lobby versus Alex Bowman final, which, guys, if you have not actually seen that. Uh, that's going to be a clip quick yeah. for us. Uh, it was Just an that last leg was ridiculous, but the whole match. Both of them averaging well over a ton for a majority of it. Yeah, in the end, it was 96, well, almost a 96 average for Danny, and it was a uh, 98. 98. 98. Yeah. yeah, for Alex Spellman. And even he was like, you know, when you're feeling that rhythm, it's just like, you know it's there, and, and you just kind of laugh and chuckle and like, this PS4 playing. person. Get, we're just responding to people with weird letters. Um, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I actually asked Alex Spellman. After it was over, I was like, Alex, I, if I had told you before the match started that uh, I'm going to, to guarantee you a 98.5 average, what would you say? He goes, oh, I won. Easily. I won. And that's not a testament to Danny not being, not being able to do that. It was a testament to um, just how confident Alex felt in that moment. And he lost. He only won three legs out of the six. Or out of the nine. It is Sunday conversation here. As we get <laughs> trip 19, trip 15, or trip 16, trip 15, whatever. I, it is Sunday. It. It's Sunday, we'll folks. Stop talking. <laughs> for a second. This is the semifinals, the first semifinal here. Race to two. Yeah. Tracy with a big double bowl on the first start, but she is way behind and, and huge fear of losing this match. Do you have our other, I think it's Marlies Keel, who's the other uh, fourth in this semi? Uh, it is Stacy Tullock and Marlies Keel. Uh, Stacy actually took out uh, Liz Tynan 2-1 uh, in the top 32. As Paula gets it done there, she threw two darts at a bullseye, or at the bull, and hit two 25s, of course. Well, wow, that was a that was quick. That was a quick match. She, she averaged threw, a 5.0 in that last uh, leg. Yeah, 3-4 <laughs> overall there for uh, Paula Murphy. Wow, that was a uh, – honestly, I'm just kind of blown away by that one. That well, last leg, it went quickly. Yeah. I don't gonna, even think we talked about it, really. She was averaging <laughs> right around a 3, but raised it for that quarter f or that semifinal. But yeah, the second semifinal going on on board number 1 right now, or board number 3 that we cannot stream, Stacey Tolick and Marlies Keel. Once those semifinals are done, we will actually bring you a men's doubles cricket match that's going to be a, <laughs> oh, it could, a tasty one. It could be a quick one, and it could be a long, drawn-out match. Let's just put it that way. As, uh, we're going to get an appetizing affair between Leonard, or Leonard Gates, Danny Lauby, and Kevin Luke and his uh, partner, Elliot Milk. Yeah, the Milkman. The Milkman. Should be a great one. Really looking forward to it, folks. Hang with us. We'll be right back with some more action here as we'll give you at least a look at this board from a side angle and give you the scoreboard so you guys can kind of keep along with the action.
All right, guys, welcome back. I gotta be honest with you, I've been talking for a good five minutes up to this point about all the fantastic things that have happened. Gave you stats, gave you overall so many great things, and uh, someone changed out the battery in, in between the matches there and put the battery in wrong. And that, that should just tell you how, what type of guy I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy who puts batteries in the wrong way. All right. Kevin Luke, Elliot Milk, bit of an advantage early on in this first leg. It is only a race to two. Danny Lobby Jr. and Leonard Gates were the doubles champion for 01 yesterday. They would love to repeat today as doubles cricket champs, facing quite the task here with Kevin Luke and Elliot Milk. But Danny throws in a big six mark. I thought it was a six mark, but I want to make sure before I said it. Elliot closes them down in two, though. Try to go back up and point through a bad dart, he would say. Soldier has a lot of 15s that he can point with. Hits four of them. Thank you guys so much for joining us here at the 33rd Annual Music City Classic. Brought to you by the Greater Nashville Darting Association at the Senesta Nashville Airport Hotel inside what can only be described as the igloo. Danny with a nice hat trick. Not going to be enough. With Elliot stepping up three darts clear at, a tight, or at the win of the first leg. Needed one more. Got it. Just a very easy 3.7 in leg number one. They will diddle before every leg as a race to two. They both get in the double. Kevin almost throws a pretty good blocker there. And I think it worked. Sure did. And that is not what they wanted to do on the diddle because Kevin Luke and Elliot Milk now with the start up one nothing, And they are not going to open, typically. Opens, closes, and points the 20s. And all Danny can hit is a three mark on the 19s. There go the 19s. And there go the 18s. Seven mark for Elliot Milk to follow the five. This is quite the buzzsaw occurring. 3.0 still for Gates and Lobby. And Luke and Milk are doing that one dart easily right now. Throws in another five. Just a nonchalant 5.7 in this leg. Danny gets a four. That'll put points on the board, but that's all it does. Elliot closes. Somehow missed a trip twice in a row. Soldier saying, so you're saying there's a chance. Would have liked to just fill it up. We'll take seven of them, though. Five, not enough. There they go. Kevin's going to go up and extend the point lead. Smart dart. Danny's just going to try and get the point lead back. Unable to do it. Ellie going to go up and point after that first dart. Kind of blocked. Adds to the point total. It's only one bowl. Had the opportunity to put a lot of pressure on the on the leg, but un other than that, Kevin Luke just goes single double. Did you blink? Because that match is over. <laughs> My goodness. 
2-0 scoreline. I'm happy I started talking five minutes before the match started, and none of it came through. <whistles> Elliot Milk and Kevin Luke, 2-0 victory. Ridiculous standard of play that they just threw there. They will move on to the quarterfinals. And that will end it for Lobby and Gates. One more event that they'll play in today, and that's singles cricket, and they'll want to improve on what they just did there. But to be quite honest with you, ran into an absolute buzzsaw. So guys, it's going to be the finals of the women's singles cricket event. Stacy Tolick will be taking on Paula Murphy. Paula averaging just a touch over a 3.0. However, in her last three legs, she's averaged well above a 3.0. So getting better. Yep. Stacy Tolick. Sorry about that. There's Miss Paula Murphy heading up the stage, accompanied by that gentleman. Yes. As they are heading up there, there's Stacy. Uh, on paper, if we were setting this up, I would tell you Paula's the favorite. I would tell you, hands down, Paul is the favorite in this, in this final. However, it's a race to two, okay? Anything can happen in two legs. And Stacy has proven her worth and skill level today. She defeated Liz Tynan in the second round. Liz, of course, our NAWDA champion from Friday night and also singles champion yesterday. Let us know where you guys are tuning in from, who you have in this one. Paula Murphy, Stacey Tullock, the Women's Singles Cricket Finals coming up next here live in Nashville, Tennessee at the Igloo. Sean Green joining you here in Nashville alongside Will Stewart, although I'm pretty sure I broke the second headset by putting a battery in wrong way and leaving it in for a good seven minutes before we realized that uh, there was no sound coming out of there and that Sean was an idiot. <laughs> As he puts in the dead battery that we had in there before. <laughs> for this one, that is Stacy Tolick. And of course, Paula Murphy there, legendary female dart player. As they are shooting the diddle right now. Nailed. Just caused a shot. Nope. It's, it's dead. Did I break it? Completely? Hmm. I think it was the battery. We're going to the battery. All right, as we're getting started here, Stacy will get us going. Ladies singles cricket finals starts right now. 
Here, I'm going to be completely honest with you. The way these batteries are set up, I didn't know that the positive and negative was actually a factor. I thought that it, just which way you put in the battery, if it was good or not. Like, I thought it was like a flip, you know, like a triple A or double A. Maybe. Hey, that beautiful voice is uh, the voice of an angel, a.k.a. Will Stewart, who put in two bad dead batteries and thought that I messed it up. Scared me half to death. Let's look here. Stacy has such a consistent, good-formed throw. First, first off, the, the second battery was the battery that you hot just about blew up. <laughs> by putting it in wrong. Listen, I need you to understand that you should have realized that thing was warm and that that wasn't the right one to put in. Yeah, I, I should Ladies, notice these things. singles, cricket, finals. We're joined in uh, by uh, Miss Miss Katie Shelton who's watching along with us. Oh, hey, there we go. Miss Katie Shelton, a participant in the uh, women's match play. The Irish sensation. Yeah, two participants tuning in this weekend as yeah. we had Lisa Ashton tuning in a little bit ago. No, it's, the it's been great. The overseas support has been great. I mean, although we're kind of labeled the USA Darts, um, we do have a lot of overseas followers, Canadian followers, uh, people that just love the game in general and uh, support what we're doing here um, as we travel around the country and put on these uh, uh, these streams for you all to enjoy. So we thanks try for our tuning best. in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. That's what means a bunch to us. You know, having a guy like Jeremy Byrne on your side in the chat is really nice. Kelly Ga Gallagher asks, are we here to talk batteries or darts? LOL. <laughs> and Jeremy goes, you have to have batteries to talk darts. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the perfect uh, comeback to that, I think. But touche to both. <laughs> Paula Murphy, a little bit, well, not a little bit. She's way off currently in the final from her average of a 3.02. Uh, and again, a couple legs ago, she averaged a 3.8. I bet that was a quick match. Uh, yeah, it, it really was. We saw it on, on stream here as we were like left with kind of a side angle because we didn't anticipate that happening so quickly. She's only faced one last leg decider in the entire tournament up to this point. The ladies actually showed up big time uh, this weekend. Yes. I'll be the first to, to say that out loud. There were 62 player singles entries for today's uh, lady singles. Cricket, that's sixty-two. Great, that's amazing. Yeah, that's 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 honestly amazing, and uh, that's why I asked Robin and, and Callie last night when we spoke to them about a uh, turnout, and they said the only thing that would kind of be the other one was like LVO, which had a lot of ladies yep. attend. Yeah, I was. I this is the third highest attendance yeah. of any tournament yeah. field tip uh, for ladies. Which is, again, hats off to uh, the staff here. I know that they had issues last year. I wasn't there for it, so I can't speak on it. But uh, I can tell you they have done the opposite this year as far as temperature goes. <laughs> I am wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants back here in the contrary booth, and I'm still a little chilly. <laughs> Stacy, Trying to stay in control of this leg has just been methodical around the board. She has been playing well, let's be honest. She took out Liz Tynan, correct? Yes. Yeah, Stacy took out Liz. Paula took out Callie West earlier on her road. Of course, the road to this point, no matter what, is going to be difficult with the level of players here. Paula Murphy, Callie West, Liz Tynan, Trish Grezik, Teresa Kwan, Stacy Tulick, Tracy Firetag, Marlise Keel. Robin Curry, there's there's some gr Christy Davis, there's some great, great players here today, or this this entire weekend. And one of them right here, Stacy Tolick is putting on a display of just methodical work around the board. One bowl away from leg number one. Nick Durachi to share in there saying, excited for tomorrow, boys. Have a great stream. Love you, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. We're excited as well. 
as we have. There it is, Stacy. Looks like she's uh, done this many, many, many times. 1-0 lead over Paula Murphy, the favorite to win this title. Outside the bull, they are just doing measurement. It is not PDC diddle rules, but they will diddle every leg. That one will go to Paula. So leg number two. Paula Murphy, floor is yours. Richard Cranford says the Frozen Tundra, that is the Music City Classic. Hey, you guys have heard of the Ice Bowl? This is the Ice Hockey. <laughs> Uh-oh, Mike Pimbleton, a.k.a. B-Level Jesus, is in our chat. Uh-oh. Still the greatest nickname I've given anyone. A little thunder we heard in the background, too. A little thunder. We've actually had some storms all weekend here in Nashville. Yeah. Luckily, we've been inside all this whole entire time. I still, if you showed me a picture of the uh, Nashville downtown and put it up against eight other other eight other downtowns, I would still have no idea which one was Nashville. Unless the igloo is in the background. Paula Murphy doing a little bit better in this one. So is Stacy. See if she stays there or takes a shot at it. She tried to throw the hero dart. You have to against Paula Murphy. I'm going to stress this throughout this. The only way Stacy wins one of the last two legs is if you end the legs quickly. If you get shots at closing numbers from Paula, you have to. The reason, the reason why I argue this and why I will continue to argue this, average-wise, the averages are there for a reason. Paula's average throughout this tournament is 0.6 above Stacy's. So by average, the longer this goes, the more it will favor the better player with the higher average. Try and clear them quickly. Gets three marks. Closes the 18s, but Paul is still in complete control. Making decision to point first. And also close the 18s. Big dart. Nice seven mark from Paula Murphy. And then sometimes when you play against the top level competition, it does not matter how quickly you try to close their numbers. They're just better. That is the first open round from Stacy that I've seen. She has been quite impressive. They're averaging a 2.8 and a 4.5. And that number's going to go up. A 7 mark again. Back-to-back 7s -back from Paula Murphy. Averaging a 5.0 after averaging a 1.9 in the first leg. And that is what Paula Murphy can do. Paula Murphy... Is oh, no hi, Will. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I've been trying to knock this out on my end. and I'm just messing with you. Do some spare computer work in the background as we try to do some different files and different things for you guys to create more of a show. But unfortunately, everything's not working for me. That's how it goes. I don't believe that you're trying at all. Uh, Nor does anyone else in the chat. They crummy. just told me. Double pull there for Paula. Uh, just to make it a four mark so it doesn't lower her average too much. Stacy's even. She's like, oh my gosh, you just hit a four mark? That was, thank you for being so kind. <laughs> Averaging a 4.8 in this leg. At least Stacy's taking this uh, whooping of this leg all in stride. Which she can, because she's up one nothing. That's why you win the first leg. If anyone in the chat wants to walk or talk to me, that'd be nice. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, there's a big and she of course has double. to point the last one too she's just a little added pressure here is, that was a 4.8 yeah why I think it ended lord 4.9 is what it ended at because she had the double ball in the first start yeah so she will now show and this shows a uh, how important this diddle is to be quite honest with you 
Stacy has to double. It's I mean, you're at a huge disadvantage against Paula Murphy if she throws like that, of course. But in general, does not do it. Paula Murphy will have the start in the last leg decider for the title of the singles women's cricket here at the Music City Classic. If she does what she just did, um, this might be over quick. Ashton Watt in the chat. What's up, brother? Hopefully you've been able to join some, enjoy some of the action this weekend. Dad's been on stage a few times. Done. He's rolled through some tournaments this weekend pretty nicely. Yeah. Yeah, as I was chatting with him earlier. So many good dart players in the room, honestly, both female and male. Yeah, the storm is moving in. Yeah, there's got to be one uh, moving There's in. some wind, too, because this is the first time we've heard some creaking in the building. Big trip 19 on the last dart from Paula. Those are those types of darts, those one dart trips on at the end of each round that are killer. Killer, killer, killer. And it looks like Stacy's taking the approach of following and closing. Typically not what you would expect to do, but with the scoring power of Paula, and she will take the time to actually point, it's not a bad strategy unless Paula throws in seven marks. Which she just did. <laughs> Big seven mark for Paula Murphy. Throws that strategy from uh, Stacy right out the window. So she'll probably look at the ni or 17s here. Ideally. Only a one mark. There go the 17s. We'll move on. Yep, she switched over to the 15s. Not happy about that dart. There's the heavy rain right there. Heavy rain. That's wind, isn't it? Are we under a tornado warning? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> That's crazy out there. Is that wind? I don't know what it is, bud. I think it is wind. We As are hearing a sound that we have not heard before this weekend, and there were storms all weekend long. So whatever this is, is different. This is weird. Sean, that's rain, buddy. It is pouring wow. outside. Wow. Yep. I mean. Wind and rain. Keith Galloway says, look, it's a lackey killer. Uh she did beat Johnny Lackey. And uh, by the looks of this performance, uh, understandable. Understandable completely. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, it's, I it's mean, like she put gas in the gas tank midway through this match. Listen, her first leg, she averaged a 1.9. Her average for the match has already gone up to a 3.2. That's how much better she is. She has thrown in the last two legs. That 16 counts. That 17 counts. 19 did not. Yeah, Russ, we know that there's a big storm going on. Paula Murphy, one bullseye away or single bull. Doesn't get it done. Does add to her point total, though. Again, Stacy has performed very well all day long, beating Liz Tynan to get to this moment. And Marlise Keel, other big name sponsored players. I mean, if we don't flood and die, uh, <laughs> which I hope does not happen in the igloo, because my our bodies are going to be preserved pretty nicely in this temperature for quite a while. Paula just leaving the one bowl. 
Stacy needs at least three bowls to take the point lead. Needs to find a double. The double would have made that very interesting, honestly. However, Paula Murphy, free reign to shoot right at the bowl. There it goes, Paula Murphy, your champion of the ladies singles cricket event. Live here at the 33rd National Music City Classic brought to you by the Greater Nashville Darter Association. No. Darting Association. No. First to three. What? I'm just seeing that. They thought it was over. We all thought it was over. First to three legs. We're getting another leg of action here. And then Paula's like, all right, fine. I guess I'll go double bowl. <laughs> and she goes, what are you doing? Why you got to do that to me? Yeah, Stacy's taking all this in stride. She's getting the best version of Paula Murphy here. <laughs> it's tough to, that's tough to deal with. How about that? Some more action coming our way here. And more storms, I guess. If for some reason we just turn off, just know that it was not our not our fault. Yeah, the internet may go on us here. Who knows? We are not done yet. I know I set it up beautifully for it to be over. You set it up beautiful for us, bud, but unfortunately, you were wrong. To be fair, <laughs> so was everyone else involved. <laughs> Duh, I knew this. Yeah. A uh, single one format, that's different. Yep, both yeah, they event just finals are best of five. Eight. So there you go. For singles cricket. Yeah, they just did that subtle bump on the uh, back end. I love it. I just wish I would have known about it before I set up everything else. <laughs> Four mark, what a dart to get that in there. Loses the flight, but finds the target. Stacy's got to feel like she's holding on to a freight train right now, trying to stay in each leg. Not a fun spot to be in as a dart player. The winner of this one gets 500 bucks, loser 250. That ain't bad. Not bad at all. First one just on the wire above the trip 18. Gonna go down and point the last dart. Only a two mark. It's almost like a gift right now. And a nice find on dart three. Not enough to get a point lead, but she's on the board. hear the crack of thunder in the mic here yeah that's not our special effects guys Those that are is real that is not special effects it does kind of seem like this was built by a movie set though with the level of rain that's coming in here it's, it's it is an obscene amount paula averaging a 3.2 Stacy a 2.6. Paul, appreciate the kind words. Vinny Norton sends us 200 stars. Thank you, sir. Jeff Dotson says, I was going to say, it should be best of five for single finals. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> that information would have been useful about a leg earlier. <laughs> Next time you hear me setting it up for so long. <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding. a touch bit sooner. <laughs> that didn't help you that I'm doing stuff in the background here trying to yeah my babysitter wasn't available yeah. so that's upgrade, not my fault trying to upgrade a few things but you know it's a struggle bus right now he's saying uh, let's go Stacy hometown hero love that she's had a lot of support in the chat a lot of support out, in the, out there too yeah yeah, that she has had a lot of support back there, including uh gentleman that let us know that he was a supporter. Yeah. 
for umbrellas. Daniel Killian sent us 135 stars. <laughs> Appreciate that. We we need it. Thank you. I didn't know I was, I was going to have to bring my rain gear. I thought the sweatshirt and sweatpants was a good touch today. For those of you that are curious, don't worry. The rain does not make it warmer in here. The storm has not affected that at all. <laughs> in fact, my hands feel colder than they were before the storm started. This might be the best air conditioning unit I've ever been, ever experienced in my life. <laughs> I'm not joking. All right, Paula. Just a little bit ahead. And now, gonna have to open up a new wedge. Only gets a three mark. This is an opening here for Stacy. She has a chance to turn this leg around. She's having a 3.0 in the leg. She did take a look at it, which I like. That lightning strike was close, I could tell. Uh, <laughs> three mark. And you guys understand that this is the first day that Will decided just to turn off the lights in the back room. Ooh, and so I it's adding a ni nice extra ambiance to, <laughs> to the feeling that I'm having of uh, potential death occurring here shortly. Definitely forgot to turn those back on as we try to do our interviews a little <laughs> bit better lighting. No, it looks great. If womp, we ever upload. Womp, 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 womp. Stacy told it. <laughs> a chance to take back control. A trip 16 would go a long way. Needs at least one more to regain the point lead. Doesn't get it done. You don't want to open up the door for Paula too often. And she just left that door ajar. Paula does not take complete advantage of it. That last dart on his three single darts to close a wedge is always the hardest. I appreciate all the up weather updates from everybody. You guys are great. That's, this is the first of two cells coming through the area, according to the Weather Channel. Okay. Todd Martin, thank you for that. <laughs> Kelly says, canoe and paddles by the time you get out of the, the hotel. <laughs> well, we won't take any batteries with us. We'll tell you that much. Another three mark. So Paula regains the point lead, but just barely. This is a battle here. Stacy has done everything in her power just to raise her level of play. She's not relying on a Paul Mur Paula Murphy uh, off leg. She's trying to rely on uh, her own skill and ability here. A single 16 will give her a look to close the 15s. And now she's going to take both darts to close the 15. Did's it done, but it is not over with yet. Paula has winning darts, especially now. There goes the 16s. What a fortunate dart. Double bullseye would win it. Oh, my goodness. I told you it wasn't over yet. And now Stacy forced to hit three bowls in this round or else Paula's not going to miss. Must go. Three bowls needed. And she's got to do it in two darts. She will not do it. Paula Murphy for the title. Oh my goodness. Unlucky kiss on the last dart and those first two hug the wire. The dart gods are giving Stacy another opportunity here. Takes a deep breath. And it's a double bull dart one. One more bull will take us to a last leg decider here. Doesn't get it. The nerves got to her there on darts two and three. You could tell those were by far her furthest off the bull. Understandable completely. 
Didn't think that that gift was going to happen. Paula Murphy, she's not going to miss six starts at a bull. Doesn't even miss four. Paula Murphy gets it done. Your champion of the women's singles cricket event. Brought to you by Storm Chasers. <laughs> oh, good, good stuff. Congratulations to her for winning that one outright. Yeah, I mean, she. let's be honest. She was the best uh, player on the day. Averaging above a three for the total event. I don't care who you are, that's class. For steel tip cricket. Just to put that in perspective for you, she would be in the top 30 in averages if she was playing the men's doubles event. For where those averages ended up. Great job, well deserved. Paula Murphy. Guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to try not to swim away. We'll be back with more action shortly. Coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Men's doubles cricket. Coming your way. Stay with us. In preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching. So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're A to Z darts.com and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country, but don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full on expert, we developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 33rd Annual Music City Classic here live in Nashville, Tennessee. We have men's doubles cricket for you now. That gentleman, Alex Spellman, who you might recognize from ESPN yesterday, two days ago, two days ago, uh, took home the Bullshooter Invitational title. One of the things Will is doing behind the scenes is trying to bring you an interview uh, from Alex Bellman. Never a good sign when you hear sirens in the background after the, uh, as the storm going on. But uh, playing cricket. Going up against Kevin Luke and Elliot Milk, who just disposed of Danny Lobby Jr. and Leonard Gates quickly. You see a five mark there for Kevin. Yeah, you want to talk about class darts. That last men's doubles cricket was insanity. Only to be followed up by the class darts of Miss Paula Murphy, our champion of the women's singles cricket title. I mean, she's going home with a bottle of vodka. Unique prize for this tournament. course playing against Alex Spellman and the legendary Larry Butler the 1994 oh boy you know what's weird is every time I say the name the legendary Larry Butler it, it does that thunder strike automatically part of the legend legend of him here is Mr. Butler Tell you how cold it is in here. He was on a quest on Friday night to find that thermostat. Turn that temperature up about seven to eight degrees, and he's like, I'm fine with cold temperatures, but my goodness. Elliot Milk, that tall drink of milk right there, throws in a big five mark. Still down in points. Spellman struggling early on in this leg. When in doubt, just go back to what you know best, and that's trip 20s. This is a quarterfinal matchup. The winner of this will play the winner of Joe Hedrick and Kevin Yaz Sinchek, and Joe Efter and uh, Hazi Hicks. Who do you guys think it's going to be? Is it going to be the Eagle? and Alex Spellman, or is it going to be the Milkman and Kevin Luke? Elliot showing off his new sponsor, Polo. Just joking. He's wearing a Polo shirt. There's Alex Spellman we have uh, learned to see. Hates that last dart, but he'll take a seven mark, I think. Wow. That's the only reason that last dart's in the board is because it's pinned against the wire. And that's the equivalent to what all three of those darts added up to for Kevin, which is why he was upset. Back to back seven marks for the team of Butler and Spellman. That shows you how quickly they can get going. And again, Elliot and Kevin made it look easy against Lobby and Gates in their last round match. For the event, Alex Bellman third and average with a 3.98. Kevin Luke is sixth on that list with a 3.73. And honestly, the top 30 
their averages range from a 4.18 to a 3.5. So they're not a whole lot of difference there between the top 30 and averages. Larry takes care of the 16s, and he's going straight at the win. Gets it done. Just a nonchalant four mark there, including three bowls. Leg number one goes to Butler and Spellman. And Luke and Milk are going to get the start in leg number two. Diddle after every leg. This is confirmed to be a first to two affair. I'm not wrong this time. Like for once, you know. Kevin's got options on that third dart. Yeah, he moved down. The reason why he moved down is because he's blocked completely on that trip 20. Better opportunity to get a seven mark by going downstairs. Spellman showing the focus. That extra focus level that we can see out of him from time to time. I think he has enacted that. You got to wonder how much different and how much more difficult that is to do in doubles than singles. You know what I dislike about Elliot Milk? He makes darts look so easy. Like he makes the dart throw look so easy. Kevin sticks the last dart, and he saw Alex Spellman, like, really, the last one goes in? Because he knew he had a huge uh, opportunity if that one only counts as one. Alex going to make his own opportunity here, I think. No, he has to stay there. 68 scored. That was wrong. Stop talking to him. All right, five mark. Gets the point lead. For a brief half a second after I said it, because then Elliot Milk hit a trip 20 right away. Throws in another 100 on top of that score line. We are in for a battle in this leg. Four, five, and a 5.0 currently. Oh, he looked at it, drags it low, and Spellman loves the fact that he has opportunity now. There's the point lead. He's got a, yeah, he's got two darts left for two marks. Does close it out. The advantage has swung a little bit in favor of Larry and Spellman. Elliot's going to try and immediately swing the momentum back. It's almost like he's looking down at the floor when he's shooting at trip 17s. We want to thank you guys for tuning in with us here. Quarterfinal number one of the men's doubles cricket at Music City Classic for the 33rd annual. That means the first one started in 1989, for those of you uh, doing your math at home. If it was consecutive, all consecutive years of the 33 years. Let's put it this way. The guy in charge now, Ray, who's been phenomenal running this tournament, uh, hats off to the entire staff. Um, I asked him a question about that first tournament and if he knew anything about it. And he goes, I do not. So that's how long it's been that this thing has been put on. You can tell this tournament means a lot to a lot of people because uh, there's a lot of a lot of those ESPN competitors. Most, I would say, half the field maybe. If you play steel tip uh, and soft tip, you're here. You made the trek six hours to get to Nashville from Rock Hill, South Carolina. 
We had the CDC match play, the Cosmo darts CDC match play for 2022. The winner of that one, Jason Brandon. Congratulations, sir. We've had the Nauta Championship. Champion of that, Liz Tynan. We've seen Alex Bellman on that stage average 98 in a singles matchup and lose by three legs in the finals. Danny Lobby Jr. We've seen our Evolution Tour for the CDC events 7, 8, 9 finals. Joey Lenaw, Seth Stefano, and today Gavin Nickel taking down the title on event number 9. So three different winners. Caden Anderson has won the first two youth tour events, trying to three-peat and sweep them all this weekend and extend his lead on the order of merit. Elliot Milk goes point, point, and then opens up another wedge instead of going for the close on the 16s. Less of a move to go to the 15s. I don't know if I like that move, but I'm not sure. I like it now. Larry only gets three. Opens the door wide for Kevin to close it out. Single needed, single hit. 38 points ahead, Elliot and Kevin. There goes the close on the Bulls. Is he upset at a single bull? Or no, he only got three. I thought that, that was a good looking four mark, I thought at least. Elliot has three darts at the bull if he wants them. Is he dropping to a point there? I think that that's a single two. Does hit a 17 in order to uh, add an extra bull to the total for points. So Larry does not have winning darts in his hand. Can put some pressure on it. Legs never over until you hit three bowls. And right now, first starts are missing for Elliot, Milk, and Kevin Luke on the bowl. And the first start for Spellman and Butler are drilling their target. Look at this. He's going to stay right there. He's going for three in the double bowl. Gets a five mark out of it. 125 points added to that total. And now they find themselves in a, almost an even spot. Elliot can shut that down real quick though. And he's not going to shut it down real quick. Wow. This chance for the match, I did not think would have happened in this leg, but here we are, Larry Butler, six marks away from taking out the match. You throw the second one at it. You do. If you're and Larry will just close out the 17s. And that's a huge dart. Going to try and just point as much as possible. Going to have to move over. Gets a five mark with how far he moved. That's still pretty impressive. 38 point lead. So Alex Bowman needs two bowls in order to take a look at the winning dart. There's one of them. There's two. He has a look at it. Trip 15. No. He literally, I saw his mouth move. He said, how do you miss it by that much? One of those things that you would always say to yourself and never say to a partner. Only a two mark, so the door back open. 
Larry Butler more than capable of going triple and hitting a single bowl for the match. And he's not going to even get a look at the winning dart. Does hit a double ball on dart three, though. Which duo is going to throw in the big winning? Even just to pull ahead a lot. They're not doing it. These guys are refusing to take control of the leg. If anyone's going to take care of the leg right here, it's going to be Alex Bellman. Now he's definitely got a good look at it. Then there it goes. Two darts. Double bowl, trip 15. Come from behind victory for Alex Bellman and Larry Butler. They win 2-0. For the match, average a 4.0 as a team. 3.8 in that leg. Wow, what a turn of events there. You can see there on the other board, the far board on the stage, that is the match that they will be waiting to see who they will play. That'll be a semifinal matchup. So far in the semifinals already, David Fadham and Jeff Springer. And look at this. Soft tip player Rick Henze and his son Tyler Henze are in the quarterfinals playing against Jason Brandon and Joe Cheney right now for a chance in the semifinal. Kevin Luke, Elliot Milk out as Alex Bowman and Larry Butler become semifinalists. And let me see if I can just pull up and watch, let you know the updates going on here. 1-1 one, one score line, Joe Hedrick, Yazinchek, after Hicks, currently. And uh, it looks like Jason Brandon and Joe Cheney did take out the Henzi father-son duo 2-0 shout out to them though Tyler is Tyler even 20? Uh, I think he's 17 17 year old Tyler Henze um, his father Rick Tyler a heck of a shot someone to definitely keep your eye on moving forward so we are just waiting for the conclusion of the match that you see on board 3 kind of in your shot but our first semifinal matchup is complete. David Fadham, Jeff Springer taking on the local team of uh, Jason Brandon and Joe Cheney. Both guys have had pretty strong weekends. Separate. Jason Brandon, of course, like I said earlier, your CDC match play champion for 2022. Joe Cheney, ESPN athlete. Featured on Friday, 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Guys, stay with us. You'll see a little bit of the action there. Um, I'll keep you updated as well as we're going through. Right now, heavily in front is Joe Hedrick and Kevin Yazinchek here in leg number three. But a five mark there from uh, Joe. Gives him a touch of hope. As you can see it, oh, not up on your screen. We're going to put up that scoreboard for you so you guys can follow along. But stay with us right back for semifinals of the men's doubles cricket. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everyone, out to the 33rd Annual Music City Classic, brought to you by the Greater Nashville Darting Association. Live, Nashville, Tennessee, Sinesta Nashville Airport Hotel, a.k.a. The Igloo. We have for you a great semifinal matchup. Our first look at David Fadham, who's honestly been playing very well recently. CDC events and here this weekend. Gotten kind of back into it. Took a little time off and has found his love again for darts. He's throwing very well. Speaking of throwing very well, Jason Brandon. Your 2022 Cosmo Darts match play champion from Friday night. Jason Brandon and Joe Chaney, Chainsaw, are taking on David Fadham and Jeff Springer, a.k.a. The Stinger. In case Joe looks familiar to you and you watched ESPN two days ago, he was on there. He actually dominated the the whole tournament the day before. So had the number one seed. Randy Magneto, though, threw his best at him, taking him down in that first round. Hats off to all those guys a part of that. Speaking of guys a part of that, another ESPN athlete on the stage. It's Alex Bellman who just walked up there. Dave Fadham doing a little uh, Hawaiian shirt action with the Flamingos. Let everyone know that he likes to party and have a good time. I love that he has a Fit Flight patch, patch on there, too, a Cosmo patch. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us here as here we go. They are diddling. <laughs> Still diddling, though. As soon as these guys are ready to go, they're going to get going. Let's get it started. Joe Chaney will go first. Cricket. Semifinal. Four mark to start it. And they are going to do that second semifinal simultaneously on that board number three down there. Uh, of course, the main reasoning for that is to keep everything on time with the men's singles going on that just started, actually. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to the tournament staff for a steel tip event with signups up until a half an hour beforehand. And, um, oh, how do I say this nicely? A lot of players and a lot of dart players who are drinking, having a great time. Every single event, for the most part, has started exactly on time. Um, it's been ran very well. I was, as an expectation coming to a tournament, this has exceeded it for any tournament that I've come to. It's a testament to how well this tournament is run. If you've never been to a Music City Classic, you need to come next year. First of all, to experience just the bitter cold that can happen in <laughs> summertime Nashville um, <laughs> here at the Igloo. Joking with Ray earlier, um, without giving too much away, he was joking about having sweatshirts and blankets for sale next year. I survived Ice Aki 2022. Of course, this is a different venue than they have been at before. Put a lot of faith in the fact of having air conditioning and it working correctly. Um, just think if he would have told everyone that it was going to be different and everything was going to be great, and then they showed up and out of his control, the air air C br or AC broke or something like that. Uh, not the case, though. No harm there. Jason Brandon and Joe Chaney with a huge lead early on in this leg. 
Let us know where you're tuning in from for this one. Who you got? Springer Fathom? Cheney Brandon? Let us know in the chat. Of course, Joe Cheney and Jason Brandon from Tennessee. Dave Fathom lives in Arizona. Which explains the shirt a little bit. Jason Brandon reflecting on uh, making a statement with the shirt he's wearing because he's been on fire all weekend long. Might as well wear a shirt that makes it look like he's on fire. And that might be the best looking... Uh, black and yellow jersey I've seen. Johnny Lackey tuned in from Texas. Buddy, I'm excited I get to commentate on your match tomorrow night. In case you didn't know that, surprise. Lackey going up against Nick Selepic tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. USA Darts Productions and Partners Promoting Darts Facebook pages and YouTube. C.A. Chatham says, a better stage setup, but tablets needed to be on the right side or for left camera angles. Yeah, that camera angle is a makeshift one that we did just so you guys had something to look at down there um, as a cutaway. That is not a typical setup that we have. Leg number one, while I was speaking about nonsense, went to Cheney and Brandon. They're going to have to throw those again. It is not CDC rules. It's not green red out um, but it turned out to be the case there they will diddle every single leg Mobile Alabama Utah in the house who thinks they're tuning in from the furthest away let us know we did have Australia actually two times this past time though was pretty cool Lisa Ashton in our chat this morning Katie Sheldon, um, I'm going to guess she's in Ireland, but she could be traveling anywhere right now. I'm sure that has been a crazy whirlwind for her. She was in, she was watching along with us for a bit. There's my Wisconsinites. Which, by the way, have, have has uh, Magic Wear announced that jersey release yet? Have we seen it? I don't know what you're talking about, Sean. Okay, good. Never mind. Don't know what you're talking about at all. Oh, I was talking about the Boom Goes of Wisconsin Night jersey. Uh, well, I, w I was hoping you wouldn't say that loud, but I mean, all right. I guess we're having a Boom Goes of Wisconsin Night jersey officially released, so. Maybe. We've been talking about it forever. What do they know? Thanks for ruining <laughs> it, Sean. <laughs> As I, I am finally other... back from my editorial duties well, I need to respond back well it's about time yeah, um, no kidding I had to respond back to, or I, I have to respond back to someone who sent me a message asking about jersey sizes and magic wear versus others because uh, they were looking into getting boom goes Wisconsinite jerseys so I assumed that it had been released already Mississippi Biloxi Akron Ohio of course my Hoosiers in there Patrick Weber tuning in with us Got that accomplished for you, bud, by the way. Nicole Dagnalt from Maine. Poplar Bluffs, Missouri. Surprised the Dag Dagnaws aren't here. I'm surprised the Dagnaws aren't here, honestly. Nah, you take two. Just kidding. <laughs> Jason and Nicole? Yeah. Well, Nicole's in the chat here. And look at the turn of events here in this leg. Fadham and Springer, a monumental lead. We're on a 5.0. I love the confidence of Jeff. He threw the first start at a bowl. Missed by a great deal for Jeff. Um, but the fact that that first start in the bowl, knowing that they have to point, they get to point the 16s. I don't know why he's not pointing the 16s. He didn't know the 16s weren't closed. That that would have to be the only. That's, there's the, that's the there's only no other explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Fadum closes it out anyway. It doesn't matter. 
Might have mattered if you would have denied Mark. Never mind. I'm not going to talk about it. Leg number two goes to Fadim and Springer. So the diddle all important here for leg number three. Race to two. And it will go to Chainsaw and the 2022 CDC Match Play Champion, Jason Brandon. All four of these guys have their CDC Tour card. That should be no surprise to you. And Joe will start it off with the big five. Jason said, couldn't be there, but we've been watching. Well, we're happy we've been able to bring you that coverage. But yeah. we possibly can. Yeah, we are. We're happy <laughs> to be here in attendance for this bad boy. Is uh, This is my first time at the Music City Classic. Um, actually, my first time at a lot of events this, this year. Because which city and... Man, if that's not uh, a statement that comes out of my mouth every tournament I've gone to this year. <laughs> <laughs> the only tournament I've returned to that I've been to in the past that I've been doing commentary for is uh, Indiana State and then... NDA, right? NDA. Yeah. We're going to talk about a different experience being in the commentary booth versus playing seven days straight. Of course, one of our biggest fans ever, tuning in from Goddard, Kansas. Oh, the old pops tuning <laughs> in, huh? He had the old kiddo yesterday and sent me a picture. Enjoyed every bit of that. I'm sure he enjoyed his time with the kiddo as well. Yeah, the wife just sent me a picture of uh, my oldest, Sophia, with face paint as a as a bunny on her face. And there all I can think about is, man, she let someone touch her to do that, and then also uh, how adorable she looked. <laughs> Sheldon Lionel says, uh, Chainsaw, what's he sawing? The competition. Yeah, <laughs> he does that one a lot, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And he stays there to close out in point Seven mark for Joe Cheney. Speaking of sawing down the competition. You can tell Will slacked on his job duties and totally didn't tell these guys to walk to the right as he's been preoccupied with everything else. Will, this is the first time I think some of these people have heard you today. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I wouldn't be surprised there. Jason Brandon. Again, I love the jersey uh, decision from him today. He's been on fire all weekend long, and his jersey looks like he's on fire, literally. Jeff Springer gets four in the bowl. Well, four marks the bowl. It is great to see Fadham back in the mix. I know he took a significant amount of time off there for over COVID. Yep. Yeah, he looks. He looks like he's he got looks loose in that jersey. Oh, well, he looks like he's got a. He's got some darts to come back on. As uh, I think he played last weekend as well. Making the trip to here. And there it is. <laughs> My goodness. Jason Brandon, Joe Chainsaw Chaney, taking it. So we will have, they are their first finalists. You can see the second match is still going on. Nightmare scenario for us as far as explaining that, uh, that board view. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It kind of is. An it is unfortunate. Um, it would take another camera and or two to cover yeah. the third board, which we do have one more camera, but the s hard thing is with the stage, we'd have to put a uh, we want to make big sure tripod on a see. table yeah. or something. Yeah, we'd have to figure it out. And unfortunately, uh, this is just what we come with. This is a learning experience for me. I haven't really dealt with a stage experience on a camera um, deal. So uh, yeah, we've learned a little bit and we'll come back hopefully stronger next year with maybe all three being able to stream that would be nice that would be great and again us at streamers our job is to um assess and improve and so far the best in the business to do that is will stewart so you can guarantee that he will not have this issue again <laughs> <laughs> that's what we try to do is we try to at least um you know, if, if something's not working, we'll figure out the best way to make it work. And that's what we try to do here as uh, we'll, we'll give you that. that screen, at least something to watch ads. Uh, Joe Hedrick and Kevin Yazincheck 
are up one nil. So we'll do a couple things in the background, including uh, upload uh, video with Ray Sessler, uh, the president of the Greater National Darting Association, as well as Scotty Kirshner, who's go. in attendance as well. Um, hasn't played steel tip in a little while, but he made the trek down here with his grandson and son, Ryan Olson and Connor Olson. So uh, we'll get those added in here and play um, in between the final. Yep. So. All right. with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the final of the men's cricket doubles. And we'll keep you here for the end of this match so you know who is playing against Joe Chaney and Jason Brandon. Don't go anywhere. And look at PJ's back.
right here with the president of the Right here with the president of the Greater National Darting Association, Ray Sessler. Ray, what do you think of the turnout this year? Man, I think it's going well. I think we, uh, you know, fighting back that loss from last year or, or, you know, the setbacks we had from last year, I think it's doing a lot, lot better. Well, the venue, the venue is immaculate, let's be honest. The uh, hotel, really impressed. Um, the hall, we actually have this hall in here, and then we actually have a, like, a spare hall as well with, uh, well, 15 to 17 That's rooms, right. I believe. That's right. Yeah, nice nice little facility we have here for the CDC as well as this uh, Music City Classic, huh? Exactly, man. We, we, we tried to give as many boards as we could. You know, to keep things moving, to keep things moving on time, and and uh, uh, keep everybody smiling. So that's what we're after: is those smiles. Well, that's exactly what you guys are doing. Your tournament staff has been uh, amazing. They've been keeping the ball rolling. Your events have been in and pretty much right in line with the next one, which is always good to see. It is. It is. Uh, you know, we we changed formats around a little bit. We tried to open it up. We tried to add more money, which everybody likes more money yep. uh so we added more money we've we've uh you know really paid attention to the details and trying to get it out there you know we had two big setbacks last year everybody knows that we had the heat number one the heat this year i made sure that uh, uh we needed to bring hoodies and blankets <laughs> so you know we found a new, the new facility kicked up uh, they're they're over you know overdoing it a little bit i mean it's a little it's a little cool but i would look we don't dare say a word we want to keep it we want to keep it as cool as possible and the second thing was was wireless and and getting our uh, uh, keeping our the darknet going and keeping it flowing. So we're doing that. We're trying to install install those things that we knew would help punch this uh, punch this music city up, and it's doing well. So I, I appreciate everybody being back. Like I said, I promised you that uh, we would do better, and everybody uh, 
everybody showed up for me, so I appreciate that. Yeah, well, it's it's been it's been great. Uh, you you can always take uh, you can always put layers on. You can't really take them that's off. Right. So that's right. That's the aspect right. of the AC. I don't mind Shoot. it at all. I don't mind it at all. And I know some of those players don't mind it at all. It's rather than the heat box, but you know, you guys have really blown this out of the water so far, and I look forward to coming right. back for years to come. I hope so. Thanks for having us. We definitely yeah. appreciate it. The speeds you're right. The internet been immaculate no issues at all for us so we definitely thank you for having us one more time and uh, we look forward to hopefully many more in the near future what do you say sounds good to me man i just uh if if i could i you know i appreciate the hotel the senesta for doing everything they've done uh all the sponsors that we've got you know the pickle pigs the uh Oh shucks, there's there's a thousand of them. I'm I'm gonna lose my mind trying to remember them all. I, I don't I don't get to interview much, so sorry, Will. But, <laughs> That's quite but, all right. But I appreciate y'all, man. And and uh, you know we can't do this without the dark players. Uh, I think that's the biggest takeaway. We cannot do this without the dart players. And, uh, you know, I can put on any kind of show I want to, a circus with, with flaming hoops. But unless I've got the people to show up to, to put in the seats and come play and play this event, which we got. And I appreciate everybody, so thank you. Well, kudos on a great 33rd Music City Classic, sir. We look forward to many more. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome back to the 33rd Annual Music City Classic, brought to you by the Greater Nashville Dart Association. Uh, you just heard from their president. Yeah, Ray Sessler. It was nice to chat with Ray for a minute about uh, the improvements they've made uh, from last year to this year, uh, just to make this 33rd uh, Annual Music City Classic happen. So, yeah, nice to sit down with Ray for a minute. It took me a little while to get that thing uploaded, longer than usual as we had some hiccups along the way, I, but I figured a workaround out to make it happen. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to have a little bit more. Looks like we're going to be waiting just a second. So, actually, we may hear from Scotty Kirshner real quick if you want to hear from him. Oh, we can do that. I was going to um, just say we're at the Sinesta Nashville Airport, a.k.a. the Igloo. We actually... so. We had a nonchalant conversation with someone. We don't know who the who he is, but he looked like someone in charge. Yeah. Let's put it this yeah. way. He's at a hotel, and he's wearing a shirt and tie with a like really fancy name tag, so you know he's important. Um, and he said that they have a brand-new AC unit, and I was like, I bet you have a brand-new <laughs> AC unit. And he said, uh, the problem with this venue uh, is that it's either max cold or max hot, um, depending on if you put it on air or you put it on heat. So we picked air, and we're always going to pick air. <laughs> um, and, yeah, that air, that air has picked violence this weekend, but it's been cold violence, and that's yeah. okay. All right, let's hear from uh, Scotty Kirchner real quick. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, though. Of course. Of course. <laughs> well, we would hear from Scotty Kirshner if we could actually hear him. Jeez Louise, looks like we're having all sorts of issues on this one. As we, normally, we don't have any issues at all with our interviews as we've been knocking them out for a little while straight. So we'll go ahead and back on over to player one. Sean will take over. I'll figure it out. We'll make it happen here in just a second. You know, it was a great idea. At the hey, time. it was a great idea, and I actually, Scott's got some great things to say, so we'll need to get this uploaded for oh, you absolutely. Folks. So hang tight. We'll get it, we'll get it there. Yeah, we have a still a pretty good time frame left here at the Music of the Classic. We'll make sure to have that interview for you. There is Kevin Yazincheck. Looks like he's doing something with the board there. Maybe making a minor adjustment. Joe Hedrick standing right behind him. Joe actually, for this tournament, is averaging a 4.04 on his own. His partner is actually 11th in average at a 3.56. And they are, of course, taking on the team of Jason Brandon and Joe Chaney. And they both are below them in average. Joe is at a 3.45. Jason is at a 3.34. Doesn't matter. Uh, either team at any point in time can average well above a 5 for the entire mat or for the entire leg. 
And we're going to see some up and down movement there. But. Nope, still that one. Ah. Yeah, thought I had it figured out, too. Man. If there's one thing I know about you, you will figure it out. Oh, so. yeah. Well, I'll figure, it, I'll figure it out whether it takes me all night to figure it out, and then it'll be useless. So maybe I'll just put it on the back burner for a minute as we have our finals coming up. That's the main priority here. Kevin Yazinchek and Joe Hedrick. Uh, what are they? Did they have a top four yesterday in the 01? They did. Uh, yeah, I was about yep. to say. I think it was. Yeah, they were top four. Um, Jason Brandon, again, majestically wearing the best type of jersey to represent himself this weekend. Uh, looks like he's on fire with the jersey that he's wearing. And guess what? He's been on fire, which is, I'm actually extremely jealous of right this second. <laughs> Without cold, it isn't here. Have I mentioned that yet? Then Yaz is up there uh, fixing the board a little bit and getting yelled at by the tournament staff as he does so. <laughs> so it's always a great feeling. There's Chainsaw. Joe, Joe Chaney decides to join us. Decides, decided to not go with the socks today, which I can appreciate, to be honest with you. That sock uh, shoe combination yesterday was impressively awful. But he makes up for it today, and that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I've been talking this whole time. I'm no, born I'm, ready. ready. I don't know. They're still warming up here. Joe just got up on stage, so. Might take a split second. The turnout for the men's singles, well, for the men's doubles, there were 156 players in this. That's crazy. And let's look here at the men's singles cricket to see how many players are in this sixty seven guys entered into the singles. It is the last event of the tournament, so tends to be the place. Although that being said, that could just be those guys that have played already. It's probably more they're gonna add up add into that. I looked at about the worst possible spot I could to measure the player list. Again, Joe Hedrick's been averaging a 4.04, one of three players above a four for the entire tournament uh, here in this men's doubles cricket. And there is on fire himself, Jason Brandon. For sure. All right, Will's going to go try and fix the camera real quick because, of course, this is the perfect time for that camera to go out. Not during all the times when we're not doing anything, but this time's perfect. Wouldn't have it any other way. 134 are uh, entered into this singles cricket, the event, last event of the tournament. It wasn't me. There you are. We're going to get going. The finals is a race to three. Four mark for Joe Cheney to get started. If anyone plays on the stage later today, can you just make sure that you exit to the right? That would be wonderful. Just exit to the right. Just a little right, right turn. A little right turn instead of a left turn. Go towards the chalker.
Jason Brandon extending that lead. Joe, again, third overall on average. One of three men in the entire tournament averaging over a four. And definitely the only one left in the tournament averaging over a four. So here we go. Joe Cheney, the only one exiting the wrong way each turn. <laughs> But I don't care because he didn't wear socks with that with that shoe combination. All right, Jason Brandon. There's the point lead, and there's the shutdown. Does exactly what he needs to do there. Makes forces Joe to open up a new wedge. Joe has a very closed off stance. You can see he almost has a little dancer's stance with how far back his uh, foot is. Joe not going to move a whole lot when he throws. He does with his arm, but that's it. In case you guys are wondering where Will is, he is scrambling hard um, behind the scenes to make everything as great as it should be. Will's getting ready to chuck a laptop broke right now with what's about to happen. Yeah, I've scooted further away from Will as the minutes <laughs> have gone on because I know he's about to hit something. <laughs> and I'm hoping it's uh, not me No, for his sake. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, when you just strive for perfection, and unfortunately, equipment's not working in the right way. There's not much you can do, but you still just tr try and try and try, no matter what, because in the back of your brain, when you should just focus on the final. So that's what hey. we're gonna go ahead and do. No, I I wasn't calling you out for uh, batteries and <laughs> letting everyone know that you are working hard, not just you know, not well, off doing your own thing. This is the benefit too, is when we have these, uh, you know you and Ryan and, and other commentators come Go in on. and do this. <laughs> 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 no, it, it makes it easier to do those production things because, it, honestly, if it was just me, well, guess what the first thing to get cut is? It's commentary. Right. So um, the the show must go on as we had our board literally just vanish on us there for a second. Um, and we didn't move at all. And it was unplugged right underneath here? Uh, no, I think, I'm, I think it was just maybe a mishap or something on a cable that came undone. So um, that's part of the deal with streaming it's been a great weekend so far but you never can stop a catastrophe f catastrophe from potentially happening well it was smooth all weekend long up to this point for the most part um so you knew something was going to happen today um mike filmton aka b level jesus in the chat saying great job streaming and how, how's everybody doing we're doing well thanks buddy yeah doing thanks for tuning in doing well here as we well, our men's singles is underway, as well as our women's doubles is underway. Yeah, we got two more tournaments to go after this one finishes up. You see uh, Yaz pointing over at what he wants Joe to shoot at, which is point. And he attempted it. Didn't get it done. Yeah, sorry. You have to make the adjustments for mine. Well, you got, a big, old, you got a big old fat head, so. <laughs> see, what I have to, see what I have to deal with? Uh, that's all right. We're going to get a couple new ones. No, We're due for an update. Listen, this has been an absolute great experience for me. Thanks for having me. I'm going to need a different roommate next year, but other than that, it's been great. Hey. I'm just I, kidding. I totally don't blame you on that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have zero, uh, zero complaints. In fact, you've actually put up with me, uh, getting up in the middle of the night without waking up a few times. Well, when you're half dead when you sleep. <laughs> I mean, it kind of works like that, buddy. Look at this. Jason Brandon. Looking for another mark there. Only able to find four, it looks like. But him and uh, Joe have a slight lead. You are one of those people that startles out of your sleep every time that you wake up? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Not funny for the person when you first do it, because then it looks like you're about to attack them. <laughs> but um, no, I'm not speaking from experience or anything. But uh, just kidding. Um, Leasing all my, no. all my out outputs here. No, it's been an absolute pleasure, buddy. Hopefully you've enjoyed the company next to you, at least a little bit. Not really. I'm just kidding. <laughs> at least I know your honesty is still there, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> no. No, good stuff. I'm happy to 
that you joined us for wow. this ride here. Those 17s look like they have a force field around them. They very well could. They very well could. Is it? We've all been in that side of of things. Is it just feels like there's just a blocker in front of the uh, target we're aiming at. I know that bull's a typical one for me. What do you think? Oh, uh, absolutely. Especially when you for sure need it, uh, or when you're up a whole bunch. That bull is, always seems like the. Well, let's just get, let people back in the match a little bit. We don't want to make this simple. Joe going to point the 18s. Stayed there, got five of them. Again, this is the finals of the men's doubles cricket. Here's Dang. a weird. Here's a weird thing for you. It says first to two legs. Oh, that is. Oh, the singles for both are best of five. Doubles aren't. Yeah, the doubles this aren't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that is kind of well. We're, here's the thing: you're used to seeing singles back to back, right? Doubles back to back. They do it a little bit different here, where they intertwine. Which I like, actually. Actually, that it does make great. things flow a little bit better, doesn't it? It does. Uh, Chad asked a great question: Is will high maintenance? No. Um, it's <laughs> it's honestly a pleasure to work with him because I understand his if frantic I side because that's my frantic type side when I stream. And I'm able just to, that's when I just go into my own zone of talking to you guys more so. If I was high maintenance, I think you'd have your own room. I'd have my own room, too. And if I was <laughs> high maintenance, same <laughs> Yeah. Tag teaming. If he was high maintenance, there wouldn't be one bed that's just dedicated to the suitcase. You know? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. He didn't listen to what I said or else he wouldn't have agreed with that. <laughs> I said there's one bed in our room dedicated to just suitcases. Just suitcases. Ah. ah. The other one's for cuddling. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Burns says yes. I don't know. Is Will High Maintenance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, Jeremy. Yes, they've been off in this leg. And we like I said, Yaz fourth and average here of the remaining players with Joe number two. And they are one bull away from dropping the first leg and they do drop the first leg the man on fire stays lit <laughs> Richard Cranford said stopping in for the darts and hypothermia watch <laughs> so far only three people have been diagnosed um, I do have frostbite on my <laughs> finger <laughs> I am definitely wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt today. <laughs> I, I went sans jersey. Typically, uh, when I'm invited to, well, hired to do commentary for an event or asked to do it, um, I will typically wear my patches and stuff to represent all of my stuff. Uh, totally vetoed that for this one. All right. Joe and Kevin are going to get the start in this leg. They need it to stay in the match. Race to two, one nothing. Jason Brandon, Joe Cheney. And that's a six mark to start off with. That's called taking advantage of having the start. Well, yeah, it's one of those players we actually saw at the Booyah Cup. Soft steel tip player as well. Oh, absolutely. I think he was a top top six in that one, if I do remember correctly. Joe definitely a little bit lower than uh, a little bit lower standard than he has been used to so far today. Again, for the tournament, averaging a 4.04 .04 on his own. It's a darn good partner to have. One of only three players in the tournament to average over that for the tournament. Kevin is feeling a start so well that after that first dart, he turned away when that dart was halfway to the board because he knew it was off. He didn't want to look at it. Joe trying to get rid of the 20s first. Does get rid of the 20s first. That's an interesting uh, strategy. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Kelly, I don't know where you've been. Temperature trumps battery discussions. Uh, hands down, temperature has been the most talked about thing. 
this entire weekend. I've thrown in some great analogies for you so you can feel the cold that I'm feeling. But I'm not going to repeat any of them now. Definitely been some goodies on the analogies, let's be honest. There's been some decent ones. So when you first jump into a swimming pool one and you get that shock cold, but then it never goes away and it never you never feel like the water gets back to a normal temperature, that's how it feels like in here the entire time you're in here. Eric Damon says, I see Joe ditched the socks. Yep. We've talked fashion. <laughs> we Joe did. Shady. We did. And I actually mentioned that to Joe yesterday. I was like, Joe, <laughs> was not rocking the said. socks today. And he goes, man, that was atrocious, huh? <laughs> I said, yeah, buddy. Wasn't I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm glad he agreed with his own fashion choice. <laughs> Look at that. What a dart. One, two, seven to one fourteen. Seven mark at the exact perfect time there. Joe and Kevin were sitting pretty now, find themselves in a world of hurt, and Kevin laughing about it. That's all you can do. Yeah, Eddie, they rhyme, but that's as far or as close as they should get to to being in the same conversation. Jason Brandon piling on the points as well. Back to back sevens for JB and JC. Kevin throws in a seven of his own. Joe says goodbye to the 16s. Thank you for the point lead times two. Boom goes the dynamite. Eight mark, Joe Chaney. We thought a seven mark was good. Throws in an eight right afterwards. They win this leg. They have won the match. Throwing a 4.9 against the throw. Wow. To put that in perspective, the highest average player-wise for a tournament has been a 4.07. So... The 4.9 is ridiculous. Michael Wall sending us a thousand stars. Oh wow! Thank you, sir. With a couple hashtags in there. Right. Tumbleweed. Oh, one sleeve, as I call him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just trying to pile in the points. Needs to close the bulls first in order to do it, though. But they are definitely on the outside looking in. And this leg, he throws a little, little sidekick there at the end. Joe. Surprised he didn't get on dart one, honestly, with how he's been throwing. Oh, watch yourself. Almost torn ACL and doesn't get it accomplished. <laughs> and everyone's laughing at, at him about it, like you should. Sometimes there's a lot of gravity at that line. It pulls you in opposite directions. Usually the gravity gets stronger as the night goes on. Joe just, Joe's not showing the Joe that has been this entire tournament. He's wondering where that Joe went to. Jason Brandon doing the right thing, wearing a fire shirt in the igloo to make sure he stays warm. And he's laughing at not being able to close it out. And there it is, dart three. Shows you how much those guys think they're just going to hit a bull every time. Jason Brandon, Music City doubles champion for cricket with Chainsaw, Joe Chaney. So the locals add another title. Jason Brandon again winning the 2022 Cosmo Darts match play, CDC match play tournament. Eventually, I'm going to get the name actually right. I've done it in way different formats, a whole bunch of different things. It's been wonderful, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, appreciate you chiming in for this one as uh, well, the Tennessee boys pull it off. Get it done. Here at the Music City Classic. Up next for us, we've got men's singles as well as women's doubles still to come. A lot of action. Yeah, hang on to your seats. We'll be back with more action here momentarily. Thanks for joining us. William Stewart, Sean Green. We'll be right back.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Green here. Just letting you know, we're actually going to cut the stream off um, and then come right back to kind of reload everything. The general, they're taking pictures on stage and doing their stuff, and then we will bring you hopefully nonstop action for the remaining of the last two tournaments that we have here at Music City. Hit that notification button, and we will be back shortly with more action live from the 33rd Annual Music City Classic.